Hey there. Okay, so today I want to quickly cover something that uh, came up during my trip to the US. Now, normally I'm in Canada and this is a fully metric uh, country. So, you know, we use liters, we use kilometers, we use degrees Celsius. And of course, once you go south of the border into the US, everything is in pounds and ounces, it's in miles, it's in yards, it's in uh, Fahrenheit. And, you know, Coming from the UK, I often forget that even though we've been metric for you know, many decades, you measure your temperature in centigrade, but you measure your area of your living room in square feet. And so, you know, this is a interesting sort of hybrid. How much is a you know, bag of sugar? Well, it's one kilo. And, you know, how much do you weigh? Well, you weigh 11 stone. <laughs> like, <laughs> these are concepts that other people, you know, if you're not used to crossing cultures and uh, borders, then yeah, it, it, it can be quite confusing if, you, if you've never seen this stuff before. Yeah, I have only just recently, even though I've been out of the country for better part of 20 years, I only recently stopped thinking of my weight in terms of stone. And, you know, there was just something that I always did, you know, in Canada, every, everyone asks like, well, how many pounds are you? And, you know, I'm no longer 11 stone, I'm, you know, 155 pounds. So, you know, it's a, uh, you know, a cultural thing that it's taken time for me to adapt to. But having said that, like, I'm, I'm quite happy going down south talking in pounds and going back to England talking in stones. <laughs> and, yeah. So, yeah. That, that was the, the first thing. But then it also got me thinking about like, well, what are the other common differences? Now, I remember every time somebody comes to visit me in uh, Canada, the first thing that happens is they can't work out how to use the taps. If you're in the US, that would be a faucet, uh, you know, taps in England, taps in the UK. But then you've got things like doors. Well, you know, if you're exiting a restaurant in the UK, you're probably gonna pull the door inwards because you don't want to go out and knock somebody on the street with that door. You don't just go barging out. But in North America, because of the fire, and I'm trying to remember now where it was, it was in the US somewhere, one of the hotel fires, where, you know, they realize that having a door that opens inwards, but you've got a crush of people coming up behind it who can't now open it outwards, like, you know, you need to turn the doors inside out. So I remember when I first came to Canada that that was confusing, but there is a reason behind it. It does actually make sense that doors should open outwards, not inwards. So that was another difference. Another common difference, and even now, this one still just messes me up royally because I have moments where I just totally lapse on it, uh, especially if I'm, I'm traveling to the UK and, and back here again. But which way is a switch when it's on? If you've got a light switch and it's in the up position in the US, that is on. In the UK, it's off. In Canada, it's on. And if you put it down to turn it on, then it's off. <laughs> so yeah, that messes me up every time. Uh, people also, you know, going back to what I was saying uh, the other week about the British plug, you know, people, they, they get confused about the whole idea that there's a fuse in the plug for the actual appliance. Well, why would you want that if you've got a fuse on the entire ring? But you know, we worked out a long time ago that just because you've got a problem with your kettle, you probably don't need to lose all of your other appliances at the same time. So that, that was something else that, uh, you know, it, it confuses a lot of people sometimes. Oh, and then we've got the Canadian money. So the Canadian money is very, very confusing if you are British because, you know, they've got the Queen on one side, so they look identical. They're the same sizes almost, but they're totally different in denominations. So the 10 pence piece in England is the same size as a quarter in the in Canada. Now, when I say that they're the same size, they're a little bit different on the weight and a little bit thicker in England. Uh, you know, English money is always more substantial. I always feel like Canadian money is a bit more sort of monopoly money-like. It's a little bit lighter and thinner. Uh, doesn't quite feel as, you know, weighty. So the long and short of it though is if you put down, say, a couple of British coins and a couple of uh, Canadian coins, you're going to have to look carefully to try and tell which ones are which just by visually looking at them. And that's something that always messes me up. An example. So a quarter, which is 25 cents, is the same size as a 10 pence piece in England. The 5 pence piece in England is the same size as a 10 cent piece in Canada, also known as a dime. So on top of that, we've got this thing called a nickel, which is 5 cents, which is not the same size as anything that's in the UK. And then we had the two pennies and, you know, the one cent and the one penny. They were the same both in England and in uh, the US and in Canada. 
I think things are going to get a little bit more complicated once America moves over to some of the coins that it's been talking about for a while. Uh, you know, I, I know that I've just spent uh, an entire week walking around with dollar notes and things, and yeah, that's that's still the same. But uh, you know, it it really is a case of when you are using the British or the Canadian money they're just really, really confusing if you're just looking at the coins because they're exactly the same to all intents and purposes when you first look at them. Having said that, we do have some other coins in England which don't exist in the uh, currency denominations in Canada. So for instance, the 20 pence piece, that doesn't exist in Canada because we've got the quarter, but then we also have the 50 pence piece which doesn't exist in Canada because you know we've basically got the dollar which is about an equivalent value. And then we've got the toonie, which is about the same as a pound back at home. And then there's the, you know, two pound coin, which, yeah. Anyway, long story short, it is confusing still for me when I switch backwards and forwards. Uh, I always have to travel with stuff in one bag. Then when I arrive at the other end, literally in, throw out the entire load of coins because otherwise I can't pick through and go which one's Canadian, which one's English. I, I just have to do a full blown switch and be done with it. So uh, anyway, that was what I wanted to talk about today. Hope you found that one interesting and speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.